Okay, oscilloscope probes. Um, so this is for a beginner uh, to educate you about oscilloscope probes and uh, what they are, what they aren't. So let's start with one that's pretty basic. Let's start with this one here. All right, so oscilloscope probes are the thing that you plug into your oscilloscope and you usually use a BNC connector and on the front of the oscilloscope is a, is a connector. The connectors will look different on different oscilloscopes, but uh, most of the time it's a BNC that will look very, very familiar to this. I'll show you some other ones that might look a little bit different. And then they have a, uh, a cord that allows you to work somewhere else. And the oscilloscope probes can come in different lengths. Um, so you can get really long probes or really short probes, um, but they're all usually about the same length. Um, so, um, once you have this in the oscilloscope, then uh, you're going to be using this part that kind of looks like a pen. Okay, and it's got this fun little wire on it. All right, so um, oscilloscope probes come in uh, different um, attenuations. So, there's something called a times one probe and something called a times ten probe. Okay, this is a times 10 probe. This is a times one and times 10 probe. It has a little switch on it. It's kind of hard to see here in this lighting, uh, but it has a little switch and you can slide the switch over to times one or you can slide the switch over to times 10. Now that's actually backwards from the way that you think. Okay, you'd say, oh, times one, then if I measure one volt, I'll measure one volt and then times 10. If I measure one volt, it'll get multiplied by 10 and then I'll measure 100 volts somewhere else, but that's not the way it works. It's actually division. So if you have it in the times one, if you measure one volt, one volt goes to the oscilloscope, but if you have, have it in times 10, only one tenth of the voltage gets to the oscilloscope. So if you're measuring one volt, only 100 millivolts gets back to the oscilloscope. So it's just opposite of what you, what you think it is. Now some probes, like I said, have a switch on them. Okay, so this one has a switch. Uh, this one does not have a switch. Uh, this one does not have a switch, so, so some do and, and some don't, okay? The uh, probes on my Rigol oscilloscope, they do have a times one times ten switch on them. And I find that the placement of this switch is kind of where you grab it and your thumb can maybe shift it sometimes and you'll be measuring and then things just don't look right and I'll look down and I go, oh, the little switch is like halfway. It's not exactly one, it's not exactly 10, it's like halfway and I'm getting weird results. So just kind of make sure the switch. Now, most of the time you're gonna be using it in the times 10 position. So if you're just starting out, always just leave it in the times 10 position. It's very rare that you use it in the times one position and that's a little more complicated uh, discussion for this video, but leave it in the the times 10 times 10 position. Now, how does the oscilloscope know that you're dividing everything by 10? Well, you have to tell the oscilloscope. There's a setting on the oscilloscope. You have to tell it, oh, I'm using a times 10 probe or I'm using a, a times one probe. Now, some oscilloscopes are quite clever. Some oscilloscopes know if you're using a times 10 probe. Well, how do they know that? Well, um, sometimes the BNC has a little tiny little pokey thing. You see that little thing that pokes out there, it's, it's uh, spring-loaded, okay? And uh, so these two probes have that little spring-loaded thing. And that actually makes electrical contact with the oscilloscope, and the oscilloscopes that have that feature see that connection and say, oh, you are using a times 10 probe. This is, this is just a ground lead. Uh, but if it sees this little pin that's grounded, it says, oh, you must be using a times 10 probe. So um, that's what these are. Some of the probes are even fancier. They have multiple pins to bring in power and do a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, that's not for this video. All right, so, so now that we have our times one times 10, okay, then how do we connect it to our circuit? All right, so there's gonna be two ways, two ways of hooking it up. Uh, let's see here. And grab a resistor. All right, so on the end here, your oscilloscope probe might have this thing on it, and it presses, and you can kind of squeeze it, and what happens is there's a little hook at the end that opens up, and that little hook you can put over a wire, and then it'll, it'll latch on it spring-loaded, okay? And so uh, you can hook it up, and then you can do things with your hands because it's all, it's all set to go. Um, and so that's a really, really nice feature. Now these things, um, these spring-loaded things do come off. 
Um, if you imagine putting your fingers kind of like right here, and then imagine opening like a uh, champagne bottle, you can just push it up and it, this thing just comes right off. Um, some are easier than others. This one uses a little more force to come off, but they all come off. So don't worry about, don't worry about breaking anything. They will, they will come off. Just put your two fingers there and just kind of squeeze and, and the thing will come off. And then you're left with this thing, okay, which is a tiny little point. And that little point can be used in a circuit to like probe around, okay? You can probe around. Okay, the other thing that little pointy thing does is it actually fits in the hole of a PC board, okay, like a V there or something. And you can actually kind of hold it in there and it'll hold the scope probe up. Now the problem with this is if you accidentally hit this, you might shear off that little pin. So be very, very careful if you ever do that. Um, I don't recommend it because these little pins will will get uh, broken. I believe you can, I know back in the old Tektronix days, you could buy replacement pins for your oscilloscopes. I don't know if Rigel sells replacement pins or not, or whether they even are replaceable or not. The old ones used to be threaded in, um, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that. But so be careful about break, breaking that little, that little tip off there. Okay, so what's up with this wire? What's this wire do? Well, this wire is a ground wire, okay? It's connected to ground. And so when you're working on a circuit, if you're, if you're measuring things, like remember a voltmeter has two wires and you're always measuring with two wires? Well, oscilloscope only has one wire. So where's the other wire? You have to have two wires to, to complete an electrical circuit. Well, it's this, this is the other wire. So you have to find out where ground is in your circuit. Maybe ground is right here. So I'm gonna clip it onto my ground and then I can go around and I can measure things. And now I have a completed circuit, okay? So that's what the ground, that's what the ground wire does. There's a little alligator clip and you can just uh, stick it on there, all right? And they connect to the scope probe with this little wire. Sometimes they break, you can get replacement, uh, replacement ground leads and stuff. They're, they're stuck onto the scope probe by a little clip, there's a little metal clip, and there's a little, there's a little metal ring and it snaps onto that ring and that's the way you put these on. So if you're a scope probe, if these are in two different pieces, just snap it together and then you'll have a complete, a complete unit. Okay, so I showed you one uh, scope probe here. Let's take a look at some other ones. Uh, here's one, that, this was a Tektronix. This is also a Tektronix. And it has a, uh, instead of having a, a metal BNC, it just has a plastic one, but it's metal on the inside. Uh, so this is very much the same thing. Uh, this one has a nice little gold plated pin on the end of it, so very nice quality. Um, this one is made by Hewlett Packard. This one is, uh, this one's actually Agilent. This is an Agilent probe. This is an expensive probe. This is a 500 megahertz probe. Let me back out a bit here. Um, it is a times 10 only though. There's no times, no times one setting on this. It's always, it's always times 10. Okay. This one also has a funny little button on it. It says ref and that just sets ground. So if you're measuring around, and you want to know what ground looks like, you push that little button and that shows your ground on the, uh, on the oscilloscope, so in case you get lost. Okay, um, this was an old Hewlett Packard uh, uh, probe. Uh, back from the 1980s, 1990s, um, very, very thin cord. They were super, super tiny, especially if you pull that off, they're just, they're just super, super tiny. They were nice to get into small places and they didn't get in the way and stuff. Um, I don't know if they make these anymore, but you might find some of these. They also have a little grabber, a little grabber thing on them. All right. Um, I recommend if you uh, are looking for used scope probes, you can buy brand new ones from China real cheap, but they're not that great of a of great a quality. This is a this is a Chinese uh, Chinese one. They're okay. I mean, they're okay, but um, I think you get better quality if you get one of the brand name ones. And you can look for um, uh, used ones. If you if you shop around, make sure that the little the little hook comes with it. A lot of times, people will list them and they're missing this part, and they'll only sell you this part. And this part is real valuable. Um, you're not going to pay any more. The, 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 this is not much cost, but if you lose it, it, they're hard to replace. So if you look on a used listing, just check the check the pictures or ask a question, make sure it comes with this part if you buy, if you buy them used. Um, here's a super, super old one. Um, this one has a pin on it. Um, okay, if you do get an oscilloscope, 
um, a lot of times they'll come with a, will come with accessories for the uh, for the probe. So let me show you that. All right, here's the bag that my my Rigol probes came in, and uh, they have some accessories. So let's open it up. A little piece of paper in here that tells you kind of how what things are. That's nice instructions. But it comes with this little funny little bag. So let's open up this bag. Make sure we don't lose anything in here. Let's see what we get. Um, the first thing we get is some little rings, and the little rings are of different colors. So why do we have rings of different colors? Well, um, the probe allows you to put a ring on it, and I put a blue ring on this one, because over here on my oscilloscope, I've got yellow, blue, magenta, and blue, dark blue, so this is kind of a cyan. So I have a cyan ring that tells me I'm on channel two, so the colors match, right? You can put rings on this side too, so I have a, a cyan ring here and a cyan ring here. And so you can set up your probe to, to be color-coded, which is, which is super nice. Um, when you have the probe tip off and you're using this just this part, there is a little silver ring here, and that's actually ground. And a lot of times when you're probing around, you don't want that to touch anything. And so this one comes with a little cover, so you can you can slip this on. Now the little pokey part still, the tip comes out, but it covers up that ground. So when you're poking around, you don't accidentally shirt something out. That little ring is there for a particular purpose, though. And it's, if you, in the bag, you get these funny little things that look like springs. And uh, can you see that? These funny little springs. And you put these springs on your scope probe, they kind of, you kind of have to kind of screw them on um, like this. And now, um, zoom back down, there we go. And now um, you have this little wire that sticks out to the side. And that's a ground wire. And then here's your measurement wire. And so like a, on a DVM, you've got your two probes. Well, right now you're right next to each other. Here's the ground and here's the measurement. And that can be very, very important in high-speed circuits to have the ground right next to the uh, probe, okay? So that's what that's for. So don't lose those little springs. Don't think they're something that's for something else. Okay, the other thing that you get is this little screwdriver, fun little screwdriver. That funny little screwdriver is to calibrate your scope probe. And so, uh, yeah, we'll have to go into that now and uh, show you how to calibrate your scope probe with this funny little uh, screwdriver. Okay, we're going to talk about compensating your scope probe. Compensation. Um, so, uh, scopes usually have some place to attach your probe that is the calibrator. It'll be a, somewhere on your oscilloscope. You'll be able to clip things on and you'll see a square wave, okay? And uh, you'll just have to adjust it to get a nice looking picture, all right? And so, you don't want it, you don't want it too small and uh, you don't want it too big. You want a nice you want a nice size, so this is a, this is a good size, okay? Now, you need to find, where do I adjust my probe? Okay, where do I adjust my probe? So, uh, this probe has a hole here. I'm gonna adjust it there. Uh, this one, there's my hole. This one, there's my hole. Okay, so they're all right here at the BNC. But, some scope probes, like this one, the hole is in the handle, there's a hole right here, and there's nothing at the, nothing at the BNC. It's up here in the handle. Uh, this one is in there. And the one that I've got in my Rigol, okay, the Rigol oscilloscope probe, is has the adjustment in the actual, in the actual probe itself. So I'm going to attach the probe up. And I'm going to use that little screwdriver they give me, and I'm going to stick it in the hole. There's a little screw there. You'll see it. And if I rotate that little screw, you can see that oh, that doesn't look right. If that's supposed to be a nice square wave, it's not. It got the wrong shape. It goes up too high and then comes down. And then this one is starts out too low. You want to have it so it looks square. You want to adjust it so right about there, it looks square. And that's compensating the scope probe. What does compensation mean? Well, scope probes have to handle low frequency information and high frequency information. And the capacitance of the probe and a bunch of other things factor in that you need to balance those things out. And compensation is balancing those things out. Right? Now, it's actually quite complicated if you want to look into scope probes. Um, this scope probe I can open up real easy, so I'll show it to you. But uh, here at the end, there's actually three adjustments 
This is the this is the adjustment over here that you normally have access to, but there is two other adjustments in here. So there's actually three adjustments on this scope probe, but it really requires some good testing, uh, test equipment stuff to, to calibrate this one particular, uh, uh, this one accurately. Other ones don't have all of those adjustments, but uh, but some do. Okay, I talked about times 10, times 1, times 10. I'm on times 10 right now. I'm going to put it on times 1, and woo, it got really, really big. So let me lower it down. So here I am, trigger on it. So if I go to times 10, it's actually 1 tenth. Times 1, times 10. Times 1, times 10. Okay? And, um... You'd think, oh, well, I, why not use one times one all the time? I want times one. Well, imagine there's a resistive divider in there. And there's a one mega ohm resistor in the oscilloscope. And there's a 10 mega ohm resistor in the, or 9 mega ohm resistor in the oscilloscope probe. And that gives you the one tenth. So if you use it in the times one position, you'll have low impedance, but if you have it in the times 10 position, you'll get that 10 mega ohm impedance. And it's a much nicer having high me mega ohm resistances to do, to do actual measurements of circuits. So you always want to leave it in times 10. Okay, so now how does the oscilloscope know that it's times 10? Well, in this particular oscilloscope, you, there's a thing here called attenuation. You actually have to tell it. Do I have a times one, uh, times one probe or do I have a times 10 probe? And you actually have to tell it, okay? Um, some oscilloscopes will be different, but there'll be some way of telling it whether it's a times one or times 10. The old style oscilloscopes may not have any adjustment at all. And it's up to you to do the math in your head. So if you're measuring a circuit and you're getting 100 millivolts, you just in your head have to know, oh, that equals one volt. Okay, let's talk about a little bit more detailed um, item of the oscilloscope. I talked about this compensation for high frequency, low frequency. And it has to do with capacitances and stuff. Every scope will have on its inputs marked what the input impedance is and what the input capacitance is. And your scope probes have to be compatible with the scope you're using. So if you have, say, 20 picofarads of capacitance in your oscilloscope, then your scope probe has to have 20 picofarads of capacitance in it. Okay. So on scope probes, uh, they're always labeled. Okay. So this one. Uh, this one says 10 to 1 probe, 1 mega ohm, 8 picofarad. So this is an 8 picofarad. It says it's for 1 mega ohm, 9 to 14 picofarad inputs. Okay? And it has a range of adjustments. So, so if your oscilloscope matches 9 to 14, then adjustments in that little adjustment, then you can match between 9 and 14. All right, so this probe here tells us some things. It says it's a 200 megahertz probe. So if you have a 200 megahertz oscilloscope, you want a 200 megahertz probe. If you have a 100 megahertz oscilloscope, yeah, 200 megahertz probe is fine, but um, you can't use a 50 megahertz. You need to have at least uh, a probe that handles the speed of your oscilloscope. So, and they, the prices of oscilloscope probes get much, much more expensive the more and more frequency you need. So this is a 200 megahertz probe. 10 mega ohm input, 16 picofarads times 10. Okay, but remember this is times one times 10. So what does the times one do? Well, instead of being a 200 megahertz probe, it's only a six megahertz probe. That's the other reason why you always just want to leave it on times 10. Um, going to times one just ruins the bandwidth of your of your probe. So it goes down to six megahertz bandwidth when you go to times one. It's only a 1 megahertz probe now instead of a 10 megahertz probe. It's 95 picofarads. That's why it's so slow. It goes to 95 picofarads, and it's uh, the times 1. So anyway, um, that's kind of a more advanced subject, but um, the, the takeaway here is make sure that the probes you're using match the oscilloscope that you're using. Um, sometimes they don't match. You need to make sure that the, um, the picofarads match. So on the oscilloscopes, different oscilloscopes will be marked different ways. They'll tell you how many picofarads the scope has, and that has to match how many picofarads your probe has, okay? Okay, here's a specialty probe. This is a 100 to 1 probe. So instead of a 10 to 1 probe, this one's a 100 to 1 probe, uh, good for high voltage things. Um, so anyway, I hope that gives you an introduction to oscilloscope probes and maybe answers some questions.